All right, so now we're going to resume with our second part of our first training session. Again, this is the G code that we loaded for the, the DITube test file that I run. This is the G code here. I've got a heads loaded. I don't have an emo handy, so I loaded a Krakatoa head. This is the same as the emulsifiable extruder EMO25, except that this one heats up actually to 200 degrees. And I've just got the EMO tube in here, and I've just heated my material. Today we're going to print with plasticine. Ow, that's not plasticine. This is plasticine. It's a, an oil-based clay. It's not good for making anything permanent, but it never dries out. So it's great for testing heads over and over. I can use the same stuff. Uh, if you get it up to about 45 or 50, it's going to melt and make a puddle. So we don't want to go too hot. But if it gets cold down to like 55 C, it'll be like a rock. So I heat my head up, as you can see, to 35 degrees. I've got my bed set to 35 degrees or so, and we're gonna be ready to go. So my head's loaded, my material's loaded. You can see videos about that, and you can also see videos about setting the Z0, but I wanna do that for you quick today. So I'm just gonna take a sheet of paper. What I wanna do, when I say a Z0 position, that means that the bed is zero microns distant from the bottom of this needle, or whatever tip you're gonna be printing from. Now that's really tough to get in the real world, so what I'm going to do here is I want to put some pressure on this paper. This is about 80 microns thick, a sheet of regular bond paper. I want to get some pressure on here so that I know I'm between 20 or 40 microns, something like that. Just enough, and it, it, you don't have to angst over getting perfect because you can adjust the bed up or down uh, during your print. Usually we only do that on layer number one. So on my screen here, I've enabled the Z Calibrate, which allows me to use this yellow arrow. And any movement with the yellow arrow will adjust my upper limit of travel to wherever I stop with this movement. So if I bring this guy up, now the green arrow will not bring me any further past. I can go down. If I try to go up 10, it's only going to go up 1. Okay? So I'm going to zero this in closer. And now I'm pretty close, so I'm going to go and do a 0.1 millimeter or 100 micron moves until I get a little bit of pressure. Okay, now I've got a little bit of pressure. I don't want so much pressure that the paper rips, so that's good. But I also want enough that I can't slide it underneath. And I can just about slide that underneath there. So I'm going to give it another maybe 40 microns. And I can just work it under, but that's good. I can adjust if needed as we start. So I'm going to turn off my Z calibrate button because I don't want to accidentally change this setting. I give myself some room and I'm going to establish that the, the material actually flows. Now there may be a little air pocket in the bottom, depends how this was loaded. And this has got a, a 100 to 1 gear reduction uh, planetary gear on this, so it's going to go really slow. So I'm just going to ramp it up here to about 2,000 or 3,000 pulses per second which is going to wind up being 30 as it goes through that planetary gear. And there's my material coming out. If you can see that. Looks good. All right, I'm going to pull that off. My bed's at 33. I'm going to say print. Now this material does, it's slightly compressible, so it's going to store up pressure. There's going to take a certain amount of pressure to start dispensing it and a certain amount of pressure before it equalizes and stops dispensing, so there may be some lag on the start and stop moves. Now I slice this to be 500 microns or half a millimeter tall and 1.6 millimeters wide. So when the flow stabilizes, I want the bead to be about three times as wide as it is tall. And that's looking pretty good right now. With emulsifiables, clays, paste, gels, you want to go a lot slower than you do with your filaments. So I think I'm printing at about 500 millimeters a minute. Yeah. Well, 250, so 250 millimeters a minute. Printing really slow with this because your, uh, your more viscous materials are less happy about really fast changes. So now we're doing the first perimeter, the inner perimeter. And now we're doing the next one. We'll do four perimeters, then we'll come back and do a diagonal infill. All 
And here comes that last infill layer now. If I felt that those paths of material were too close or too far, I could use the Z plus or Z minus buttons on the screen to bring the bed up a little bit with the plus or further away with the minus. But these are looking really good so I don't feel any need to adjust that. If you see a gap between the beads, especially in the corner, it means you're a little bit far and, or if it doesn't stick. Or if it's pushing out the material so flat that it's pushing up like troughs, little ridges between the two, uh, two paths, that means you were too close and you should back down a little bit. Here goes layer number two. One thing to be aware of with this material, it's also very sticky, so if there's any little excess, it'll, it'll stick to the end of the needle, and so you may see some debris on the edge by the time we get done. There's perimeter four just about to finish up. Infill for layer two. If you see the lights flickering, it's just a heating element coming on and going off and changing the power supply to the LEDs. They're very sensitive to that. If it bothers you, let's turn that off. Well, we're going to leave it on for the camera. This is the last layer with infill. I had it set for three bottom layers. So the rest of this will just be perimeters all the way up. Again, this material is not melting and fusing with anything. It's just the pressure when it comes out of the needle that it sticks to the layer beneath it. So if for any reason there's an air pocket or some imperfection, we'll expect that defect to travel up layer after layer. If you look on your screen, you can see we're currently on layer four. We've sent 1,100 and change lines to the motion controller out of 4,167 total. The estimate is just over 12 minutes for this print, and I'm right at five minutes into it now. This estimate's a little low. This is probably a 13 or 13 and a half minute print. In addition to our Z plus and Z minus buttons, we can do a pause at any time, and then click it again to resume. Or we can do a pause, we can tell them to pause at the end of this layer. So we can do that and wait for it to do the pause. This is for some people that instead of inserting a pause command into their G-code, they want to stop it at a certain point and do some kind of uh, insert or an inclusion into their print. And also the kill job here would just cancel the job. Same as the kill job button up top. There's our layer stop, so now we're going to just resume. A little pause you can hear between each perimeter is when it makes that non-printing move, it does an unprime or a retract. It moves to where the next perimeter starts and it does a prime or an advance. So that's what that little pause is between perimeters.
just about the last layer. Good.